yeah. What's up, nerds and nerdettes? We little nerdlings all. Your buddy Big John and G from Two Gun Pixie Presents The Legendary Gaming is back again, my friends on your screens. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting me come over here. So today, me and the 20 Sided Warriors played a couple of games. It's October, so we still got the horror games in mind. And uh, a couple of them stayed by late tonight to give you their 20 Sided Shots on both of them. We're going to do one at a time. And the first one up today is what we thought of Dead of Winter, The Long Night. <laughs> and we literally, and I don't mean that figuratively, we literally unboxed this just to play it. I picked this up last weekend at New York Comic Con. So, we got with us my main man, Ryan, Hi. and everyone's buddy, Alex. Hey, hey. So, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about what they thought their very first playthrough, what their first impressions of this game is. Now, just to clarify things, Ryan has played the original. Yes. But this was the first time for playing The Long Night, and we did play with one of the modules. Yes, we played with the uh, improvements module, which is for uh, extra tools and things. All right, so what did you guys think? Uh, I thought it was great. I, I Having played the original Dead of Winter uh, just once before, uh, I've been kind of pining to play it again, um, kind of thinking about it, because it is, it is a really well-put-together game all, all, all together. And then adding in The Long Night things just kind of amplifies the rules a little bit, adds in a couple of components and adds in those optional modules that you can tack on, which is the uh, enhance, uh, the improvements one, the um, bandits one, and the racks on, yeah. the racks on um, uh, ex uh, a, a, a module as well to add uh, in those extra components. But we just did the one. We just did the, uh, the improvements one. And I thought it added a nice little component to the game. We played a little bit of a shorter game. We played just four rounds out of a possible ten. Um, so there's not a whole lot of time to get stuff together, so you really have to kind of prioritize what you're doing. And that's for everything, not just the improvements either. But it, uh, uh, it's a well-put-together game. It kind of really forces you, especially playing with the limited rounds, it sort of forces you into getting things done quickly and sort of moving things along as fast as possible, which is kind of what we ended up doing. It's like yeah. right out of the gate, we're jumping in, going to the places outside the colony, trying to get items, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, and the other thing that actually kind of sped us along was I had a guy that his ability was to kind of prevent the, uh, 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 the exposure rolls. Yeah. Um, so once you kind of eliminate that, half of the work, half of the, the threat is already yeah. down because you don't have to roll to leave and roll to come back. It's just on, the, on what just coming back. Um, so that ended up helping out a lot. Uh, uh, I was the hidden traitor, though, so kind of like I picked these... <laughs> at the very beginning, I'm like, okay, let me pick these characters who kind of help people. I had one... I had that guy that would prevent exposure rolls to start, and I had one character that wouldn't have to roll exposure at all. Uh, or it would, it would, she resisted all other exposures except the bite icon, which once you get a bite on the roll, you die immediately. It's over. Um, but I had those two great characters to help. And then I get my, my hidden objective, and it's like, you want the traitor? I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so now I have to try to kill everybody. Um, so that was kind of an interesting dynamic, trying to be like, oh, yeah, use my guy's ability to help after I'm going to try to kill you in a couple of turns. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> but I thought it was, I, I loved the first one. I loved this. I thought it was great. Yeah, how do you think it compares to uh, other hidden traitor games? I mean, I've played this and uh, Shadows of Camelot and right. uh, uh, Battlestar. Have you? Which of those? Have I you played, played Battlestar and I played Betrayal at House on the Hill. Um, right. And uh, I think that those two games sort of. I feel like this you can kind of. It allows you to be a little more subtle, um, because it really is all about your personal thing. So it's like either yeah. it'll be make sure this hits, you know, make sure the morale thing hits zero and get all these items. That's the one that I had. Uh, and so it's like you can sort of hoard the items yeah. and not be obvious about it. Like, yeah. okay, I'm getting stuff, and it's like, oh, contribute to Christ. Well, I ha oh, I don't have anything. Right. Because you don't really have to show off anything at any given point. Right. Um, the only thing that was I was having trouble with was getting the morale down to zero. But I feel like the, at, compared to other hidden trader games, which at some point it's like, hey, now I have to reveal myself because yeah. I need to get my objectives done. It's you can be completely subtle with this, get to the end of the game. And then once everybody's once it's all said and done, you realize, oh, that person was the traitor. I had no idea they were working against us. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, it's a lot better than uh, Battlestar Galactica, in my opinion, um, for the hidden traitor aspect. Mm -hmm. um, Battlestar Galactica does. I mean, you know what color cards people are getting. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to sniff them out um, on that. So I mean. I've, I've never quite wrapped my head around quite the right way to play Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I there's I think just a lot of strategy to to playing the hidden traitor, and this one I think is a little bit more straightforward in a sense because it is so much easier to hide yeah. what you have because you know people people know that you're at the gas station, so well there's a good chance they have fuel, but there's, yeah there's no guarantee you could have gotten food or tools right so yeah. so that I mean that's 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 good um, and at the same time. Those cards say where they're from. So when yes. you're, if you're sneaking yes. them in there, um, and there's not other players going there, mm. you're giving yourself away. Mm. Um, but I also like that you can kill each other, right? So yeah, you can, yeah. You can, you can have the survivor on survivor action, um, which is which is cool. Um, and some, we, and we that, didn't get into that. We're, no, I didn't get into it. Was if we had more turns, I probably would have. Yeah. Because it would have hit a point where I'm like, okay, the morale track is not going down. I need to try to you know move this along. At, towards the end, I tried to get back to the colony to try to attack zombies and get bitten intentionally, yeah. and it just it <laughs> didn't quite work out that way. I was gonna go, and I'm like, well, as I moved, a guy died, and I only had one person left. So I'm like, if this person dies, I'm gonna lose everything, and then she died. So I'm like, well, now I can't win at all. So I'm just gonna try. You know, this is the very last turn of the game. So let's just go all out and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, it was an exciting ending. I mean, yeah. I, I ended up accidentally losing it for <laughs> left, left a guy in a <laughs> left a guy in a zombie sorry. infested area, and then uh, it overflowed. And they they, yeah. they ate her, and uh, that was the last morale point. It was the last morale. Because he kamikaze his uh, his two <laughs> his two uh, two guys, and so. But yeah, it was it was. I I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the theme of it. I I think it has some good dark humor in it. It does. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, it, it does. Um, there is a component that it does warn you about because some of the cards can get a little more darker, a little bit more kind of, you know, the evil or darker side of humanity. But there is some, like, you had that one um, Crossroads card about the explosives? Yeah, yeah, so one of these uh, characters is an explosives expert, and so it's a, uh, the card is, um, there's two options. One is she can make these barricades, which prevent uh, zombies from coming in, so instead of zombies spawning, they just break the barricade. Well, she makes it so that all your barricades that you build in the, uh, the colony, instead of being barricades, they're, they're explosive. explosive traps, <laughs> um, which are awesome because they kill all the zombies. But the downside is you have to roll a dice every time yeah, one of those goes off. And, and if it right. ends up on a one, it wounds, it, it hurts mm -hmm. all of the survivors in your colony. And then the other one is she builds this giant bomb that kills all the zombies on the board. But if you roll a four or less when you use it, so... <laughs> yeah, she, 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 she's, she's make dead. it happen. Yeah. She, she goes squish. So, so, uh, so there are, yeah, there are definitely some kind of darkly comedic effects to it, um, yeah, but that's great. Yeah, I, I wish we. It w I would be interested to read some more of the um, the more explicit the the, the yeah. cards that they warned you about. I mean, I saw a couple, but I didn't really read through them. Um, so, so I'm I'm curious, kind of how mm -hmm. how dark it gets. But I think it is a great feature that they do label those cards. They, yes, there's. I mean, it's great if you have kids. Um, it's also great if you have people in your, your game group who have sensitivities. Yeah, they are sensitive so, to things um, and don't, yeah, like, we'll, we'll take zombies to a point, and it's like, okay, that's fine, but once we breach, once you breach into some of the dark, some dark, darker topics, then yeah, it's like, okay, let's, let's tone this down a little bit. Yeah, I, I, what do you think of the components? Well, the components are great, because it kind of, it's clear, everything's very clearly different. Like, there the, the been other games we've run into where it's like, the, some, some tokens or some pieces are very similar, but, like, the only thing is the, um... The, the character the, the survivor tokens and the zombie tokens are shaped sort of similarly mm -hmm. um, but even then like you just a quick look at the actual artwork it's like oh this is very clearly a zombie this is very clearly a survivor so just at first glance it might be difficult but other than that it's, it's actually uh, well done um, lot, there's a lot of components yeah. which I'd forgotten yeah. about like I remember oh, playing man. the original Dead of Winter I'm like oh there's a, few, there's a bunch of stuff I forgot just how much yeah. and even though there wasn't a lot of like just Long Night specific things that are in here there's a lot of things that are very similar to the base game as well Right. so there's a lot to go off of but there's it's so cool that there is a lot of representation of like when this happens put this shit out when this happens put this thing out when this happens put this out so you definitely do get that visual component and that's what I mean I you know I like that. I know it's more work putting stuff away and everything at the end of the day. Yeah. But um, when you're playing the game, it does end up making a difference because you don't have to keep track of things yourself yeah. or like get uh, alternate components like, oh, get a bunch of coins or get a bunch of like little Lego pieces if you have them to kind of represent things. Yeah, and I really like, I mean, I like the artwork. Um, I, I'm with you. I think the, the zombies were, I mean, they have outlines on all of these yeah. cardboard figures, which is kind of, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it would have been nice if they would have made them a different color or something, just so that you can 
easy, separate them easier. Yeah. I mean, it's not so bad on the board because it's very clear, you know, they're either in the zombie area or they're in their survival yeah. area. Yeah. Um, but just the initial separation can be a little Agree. annoying. Um, I, we also opened the original, took a look, and it looks like the locations in this are all cardboard now versus paper, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, the, just the materials of the components was great. It and the great. print quality is better, so, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I love, I love the art in this too, so. It's very thematic. Yes. Because like, they kind of give you that, like, everything is covered in, all the artwork pieces are they're covered in snow, all the scenes are covered in snow. You see a lot of wintry aspects. There's even cards that talk about the winds are coming, or yeah. snow is falling, and you need to, you know, it's getting cold, you need to get fuel to keep everybody warm. So there's a lot of thematic components that do drive the plot of the game as well, which is really interesting. I also like that they have uh, scenarios of different lengths. So you can yeah. play this game and you can be like, you know what, I want a long game session. I want yeah. to play for like four hours. All right, we'll do a long scenario. Mm -hmm. I only want to play for, you know, an hour or two. And you can do that. Yeah. And I, I always like it when games let you adjust that. Um, because there's some days that you do want to do the long one. Mm -hmm. And there's some days that you just kind of want to bang out something quick and, and, and enjoy it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait to get this back to the table. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's going to be great. I, I'm actually looking forward to playing the rock songs. The Component, that component of all the uh, the rocks on um, module. Yeah, that looked interesting. Yeah, so the the two the, the two modules that we didn't play with the bandits. Um, <laughs> it's pretty cool because it adds in little bandits. Actual and band, yeah. The first player that's ex exiled that's not the that's not the betrayer mm -hmm. becomes the bandit king. <laughs> bandit leader. <laughs> so yeah. uh, he controls all the bandits, and so he has a little army then, uh, which sounds really fun. And then the rocks on uh, campaign adds. Special zombies. Special infected. Yeah, 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 yeah. very like Dead Rising or Left 4 Dead. If you played any of those video games, a lot of that kind of sort of interesting component where you have uh, this corporation out there that's doing all this weird stuff. Yeah, and both of those have these little campaigns that I'd like yeah. to try. They're yeah. mini campaigns, like three instead of having one big objective, it's mm -hmm. three stages. Mm -hmm. So I think that'd be fun to do. It would be do, fun. Yeah, try it out. All right. All right, guys. Uh, great information. Thanks for that drop, man. That was uh, you guys covered everything. Like the way you cover the art, the way you cover the components, the gameplay, the mechanics, the comparison to the original one. All very cool. So, everyone, your buddy Big Johnny G from Two Gun Pixie Presents Legendary Gaming and the 20 Sided Warriors. We are. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>